Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to day eight in our journey into the first letter that Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. We are going to be looking at chapter seven today, a very interesting chapter, a chapter that has been used by many people to defend marriage and also to defend the status of not being married as to what is the better option. However, I do believe that they have used this chapter um, incorrectly. So we are going to be addressing it. I'm going to give you insight that I think is going to help you to get a clear perspective of what Paul was really trying to say regarding married life, etc. Now, there are three basic headings that I would classify chapter 7 under. And the first one will be the information that Paul gave to people who found themselves in married circumstances. The second one would be, of course, information that Paul would have given to people who, for example, found themselves to be slaves and then they accept Christ and what happens to their status. And then the third heading I would have given was to that of the unmarried, those who hadn't yet um, found themselves in marriage or perhaps as a result of their loved ones um, passing away or even on the grounds of divorce, the kind of circumstances they found themselves in. Now I want you to be aware that the, the whole purpose of this is not to try and defend marriage or to, to defend being single. That is not what Paul wrote this particular part of the letter for. In actual fact, the, the main verse that will give us clarity regarding this, this um, letter of Paul will be verse 17, which we are going to look at. And remember that with this concept in mind as to what we're going to read now, we will use this as the launch into trying to understand what Paul was saying regarding being married, unmarried, or finding yourself as a slave. But notice verse 17, Paul says, Nevertheless, each person should live as a believer in whatever situation that the Lord has assigned for them, just as God has called them. So I want you to notice that Paul starts off this sentence by saying, nevertheless. Now the word nevertheless is almost giving a kind of option open. If you should find yourself married, if you should find yourself unmarried, if you should find yourself to be a slave, then if you're married, a slave or unmarried, you need to bear in mind that you need to in the situation that you find yourself in, be aware that your first and prime objective is to serve the Lord. So no matter what situation you find yourself in, you, your first point of departure or the moment you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you become servant to Christ. You become... He becomes your prime objective. He becomes the person that you wish to please above all. He becomes your head. And this is what Paul is going to bring out quite clearly as we look at chapter 7. Now let's first of all go to this part. So bearing in mind that should you, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, find yourself to be in a married status, Paul's saying that there's nothing wrong with that. But what one needs to understand that the situation you find yourself in is going to be double demanding on you as a Christian. For example, Paul says that the first objective of marriage is that both parties have agreed that they are involved with one another, that there is a fixed relationship together and that each person in that position is to um, complement the other person. So for example, the, 
the responsibilities of the husband primarily would be towards his wife and to making sure that he met his obligations with regarding her. The wife in the similar manner, she would make her husband her first priority and making sure that she was complementing his life because that's what they've both committed to. But what Paul is trying to also bring out here, that should you find yourself in those circumstances, it's going to be a bit harder for you to devote entirely to your service to God. But that is still what you need to do. That means husband and wife, even though they've made a commitment towards one another, as a whole, their commitment should be to that of service to Jesus Christ, because he has purchased them with a price that they are part of his body. You see, being married doesn't exclude you from being part of the body. So Paul is trying to say that there are problems that, or complications that come in as a result of the married life, and that is that there is this responsibility to your spouse. Now, with that in mind, I want you to notice that he says regarding the unmarried, that that is a good position to find yourself in because he says, and I'm going to be reading now from verse um, 28, he says, and he's talking to a virgin and he's, he's saying this, if you do marry you have not sinned. So Paul is not trying to say marriage is sin or not. He's saying if you marry, you have not sinned. And if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. So he's saying that this decision to get married, was there was nothing wrong with it. In actual fact, God endorses that. That is what God introduces. God says it's not good for man to be alone, and he made him a companion. But the objective is that they should become one in service. But what happened in the first marriage is that instead of Eve focusing on serving God and Adam focusing on serving God, serving God, what happened is that Eve chose to follow the instructions of the devil. So she took her eyes off God. And what happened to Adam when Eve came to him, instead of remaining with his eyes fixed on Christ, he took his eyes off Christ. And so, in a sense, they became the prime objective in their lives. Whereas Paul is saying, no, that's not what should have happened. Both of them should have kept their eyes on Christ. So there is this danger in marriage, and Paul actually says this, but to those who marry will face many troubles in this life, and I want to spare you this. Now it's almost saying that part of being married adds certain challenges to you that you would not have had if you were single. For example, an unmarried man is concerned about the Lord's affairs, how to please the Lord. And an unmarried woman or virgin is concerned about the Lord's affairs. Her aim is to be devoted to the Lord in both body and spirit. So, so what Paul is really saying here is that when one commits yourself in marriage, you must understand that prior to that, you were both unmarried and your focus and your duty was to the Lord. But what marriage shouldn't do is come as that wedge between you and God. So I want to now move to this part about servants because I want you to understand something. So Paul is not endorsing marriage and Paul is not going against marriage. Paul says both are um, acceptable, but never forget that your first prime objective is to, as Paul says there, to want to please the Lord in all matters. So a married couple should as a unit want to please the Lord in all matters. 
That is where they need to be unified. A single person must want to please the Lord in all matters. So Paul is trying to say this, that if you can find and should find yourself in a position of being single and you don't um, fail or fall to the temptations of what it means to be single and you can live a life honorable to God, then Paul says that is what you should do. Now, the interesting thing, if you look at Paul's comment where he says, I wish that all of you were as I am, which is in verse 7, we get the impression that Paul was a single man, an unmarried man. Now, th there's a lot of debates about that. But Paul is trying to say, and one of the conditions required by being a Pharisee was that you had to be a man in good standing, a man who was had a good control over his household. Because an apostle or an elder was a person who could govern his household properly. So Paul is also trying to say, and we're not sure exactly of the situation that Paul found himself in, but he could have been married and his wife could have passed away and therefore he found himself as unmarried when he accepted Christ or he could have been a divorced man when he accepted Christ. But what Paul was trying to say, regardless of the situation you find yourself in, your first and prime objective should be to serve the Lord, to please the Lord in all matters. Okay, and then to round this off, I just want to take you to these the question of servant or non-servant. You see, Paul says that should you find yourself to be a servant when you accept Christ, it doesn't make you a non-servant. You don't all of a sudden become a master. In actual fact, you are in a position where we are all called to, and that is to be servants to all, and that we are to be good servants. So, Paul is just saying in chapter 7, if you married, the, the, usually the prime concern will be to make sure that your spouse is happy because that's what your devotion be, should be towards, towards pleasing your spouse. But Paul says that should never take first precedent when it comes to service to God. So let me use in conclusion the counsel given to a woman in Ephesians. In the counsel given to women in Ephesians, Paul says that they are to be submissive to their husbands, but as to the Lord. And this is what Paul is trying to say here is, you, if you find yourself in a married situation, or if you find yourself in a slave situation, or should you find yourself in not a slave or a married position, your prime objective should always be to make sure that the Lord is served in your life. So he's saying to the woman who finds herself married, your, your first submission should be to your wife, to your husband, sorry, but only as far as your submission, that submission is in accordance with her submission to the Lord. And so that is basically what it's all about. A very interesting chapter, as I said, and one that I could have spoken much more on. So the gist and the finality of it is this. In whatever situation the Lord has assigned to you, remain in that situation and serve the Lord with your full body there. Serve the Lord with your mind, your soul, your body, and your spirit. Serve the Lord with everything. Have a wonderful day. The Lord bless you. Bye-bye.